Well, hello there. It's Dr. Robin Gould here for Marriage Moments. I'm so glad that you're here to join me to be able to have about 30 minute discussion to continue on in some topics that I've gotten a lot of feedback about that we can kind of, I'm going to nuance a topic that we've kind of been excavating lately and it was about feminine energy. This is one of the things that um, a lot of women were sort of unaware. I think they had a general idea that there was masculine energy and feminine energy, but it's really become a topic in more of the mainstream, I would say in the last 18 months. Um, and a lot of it, I think, has to do with a lot of our social issues going on where we're kind of getting confused in certain ways. But here is where we're going to get some clarity and go a little bit deeper into what we have talked about in the past is the difference between um, masculine energy and feminine energy. And so we were able to describe what masculine energy generally felt like and feminine energy generally felt like. And we had talked a little bit about how women have a little bit of masculine energy and are dominant in feminine energy. And the, the reverse would be true for males. But, and so we were discussing what it was like to know when we're more in our masculine energy and people can sense that. And we've kind of talked about how you can tell if you're in your masculine energy, what sort of behaviors and coping mechanisms are, it's kind of like armor you're putting on or actions you're adding to your repertoire rather than what we would call what I would say sinking into yourself. So when we talk about how do you get into your feminine energy? Will you go inward? Because it's what's inward where your masculine energy is what you're putting on. So that's kind of a way to remember. It's kind of inertia inward or inertia outward. Um, would, that, would that be the, the trajectory of the feeling or whatever you want to, however you want to say that. But what I want to do is nuance that even a little further today. And I want to talk about what's called the wounded feminine. And I'm going to juxtapose this to the wounded masculine. There's a lot of opposite things going on there. I'm going to read them as a list. And we're going to talk about just a couple of the main ones for the wounded feminine. So we want to know the difference between operating in our masculine energy rather than our feminine energy. We've talked about that and you can go back and watch those shows. Nuancing this further, going deeper into it. When are we, you know, we're not in our masculine energy. We're in our feminine energy, but we're in the wounded feminine. And so I'm going to put my glasses on. If you see the ring light, I apologize. I'll wear them as short as possible because it's so annoying. Okay. Now the wounded, I'm mean, going to list to you the wounded feminine, and then I'm going to list to you the wounded masculine. Okay. The wounded feminine, low self-worth, afraid to speak her truth, compromises her integrity and values, easily attached, manipulative, stuck in victimhood, basically waiting to be saved or drowning in her emotions. Now, a man, when he's operating in his wounded masculine, he's not transferring into feminine. He's staying in masculine, but in the wounded, this is how this manifests. He's extremely critical, emotionally unavailable, controlling, constant inner and outer conflict, so highly reactive, selfish, needing to be right, stuck in his mind, aggressive, and afraid of failure. And a lot of those things were on the list of the, when a woman is in her masculine energy, you'll see a lot of those behaviors. Well, let's go into this. Let's talk about the wounded feminine. So you, the wounded feminine, like I said, she is, it's when she's going inward. It's when she's sinking into her feelings. Um, and I apologize for the glasses because I'm moving light, but low self-worth and afraid to speak your truth. So you have probably gone through, actually my camera just got fixed. <laughs> I know we're recording, but I'm still gonna do it. So it's only fair. There we go, there. I had a computer problem today. Okay, so low self-worth, let's just start with that. So when a woman is in her wounded feminine, she will question her worth. We talk all the time about, we always discuss the, um, idea of your identity is, is the person that God made you is a wonderful, holy creation of his that he created for himself to bring himself joy. So you're the gift he gave himself. You're a feminine 
creation the father made. When you are unsure of your worth, you're feminine, you're in your feminine energy, but that's a wound when you're unsure of your worth. So when you are wondering if you're worthy, that doesn't necessarily mean you're in your masculine energy and you're coping with it by being aggressive and mean. You might just be going inward and feeling very insecure. And that insecurity would be still in your feminine energy, resonating as a female, as a feminine um, entity, but wounded and questioning your worth. So whenever you're questioning your worth, you're not acknowledging and there's no condemnation in what I'm saying. I'm trying to be kind of like, I'm trying to bring the bomb here, right? To put on the wound is that we know and it's easier said than done, right? We know that we're worthy because our father made us worthy and anything he made is not junk just because of who he is and what he is, right? And so we're going to go to the second one. We're going to kind of dovetail these a little bit. The next one would be being afraid to speak your truth because if you are unworthy, you're afraid to use your voice. You're afraid that what you say will be rejected. You'll be misunderstood. You'll be mis you'll be judged. You're afraid of the consequences that the world will punish you for telling the truth. And one of the things a lot of women talk about all the time is they feel like they're peacemakers. They want to be peacemakers all the time. So they think, well, I'm going to abandon my own personal opinion for the sake of harmony. And you know, we've talked around this program before that when we abandon ourselves to make other people happy, we go to this fake sort of peace that's not real because we're not whole and complete in that, in, in these hashtag facts. And we go out, go to war with ourselves. And when you go to war with yourself, you're wounding yourself. That's that autoimmune disease that's just attacking itself. And so the wounded feminine, she questions her worth. So she questions being even able to speak her truth. Do I even have the right to occupy space on this planet? That's where the feminine goes. She's very inward. She's very looking at things introspectively rather than in every way analytically. Now, introspectively can look analytically, can look analytical. Like we're talking about like, this is how I see the situation. And a woman will do that. We'll say, oh, she's so analytical, but really she's super into intuitive and introspective, which is not being detached from the information where analytical is more of a detached state. So you're kind of getting the picture of what I'm saying about the wounded feminine. Do you see how this all goes inward? It's all based on worthiness, right? And let's go on to the third one. We're even going to dovetail this because they all go together. So compromising her integrity and her values. Now, this is a tough one, particularly for the church, because we've had a lot of uh, misogynistic hierarchy that has taken over. And, it, and a lot of men hate it just as much as women do. But it is something that's been pervasive and it has infected um, people in leadership positions right down to the people who mop the floors. I mean, there's just this massive disconnect between the strength of feminine and the idea of leadership. And that's something I was with Charlie all day today. We had a spa day with such lovely conversation and we were kind of just discussing how, what a painful uh, way that is to live. And it's so unnecessary because change can't happen. But when we are compromising our value and integrity, it's because the system is, it's kind of like with your computer, you hit something that isn't working. It's like, dong, dong. it's just like rejecting you. And so if you're in a system and it's rejecting your integrity, I mean, have you ever had a friend ask you to do something unethical? And you're like, if you were my friend, you wouldn't ask me to do this. I mean, there are going to be certain times where someone's got to say something because it's just, you know, you've got to do a little pushy on the little favor. I know these little gray areas exist, but the wounded feminine doesn't feel like she has the right to stand up for her integrity. She doesn't feel like she has the right to speak her truth. She doesn't believe her values matter, that someone else's values are more important. And in marriages, this is a huge problem because many, many times, a woman in her intuition, in her feminine energy, in the way that she is introspective about material rather than just analytical, her feelings and her heart and her intuition will lead her to the Torah before her husband. And then she'll start developing values and standing in integrity in those values, but they aren't shared. And she feels like she doesn't have the right to, to say anything. Now, at the same time, 
of course, we absolutely don't want to in any way push or solicit or try to get someone to do anything, like to practice a religion or a faith that they don't believe in. I mean, that's not the point. And if you read Charlie's book, Charlie's book, she writes in, um, it's not my way to pull. She talks quite a bit about that, about trying to be the Holy Spirit to your husband. Obviously, that's not what we're talking about. So stay with me. We're talking about wounded feminine and in values and integrity, about daring to speak. There's a difference between daring to speak about me and then telling you what to do. The wounded feminine doesn't even dare speak. She doesn't dare to stand up for her values and her integrity where she can say, I'm not telling you how to live or what to do. I never would. All I'm saying is here's what I will do. And here are the, the, the parameters around what I value in my integrity. So these all go together. Am I worthy to speak my truth and uphold my values and my integrity? These all really dovetail. Let's keep going. Um, okay, so here's one, easily attached. Okay, that is interesting. Attachment, right? I'm an attachment specialist. This is what we talk about. We're talking about something a little bit different than actual healthy attachment that we're trying to foster and nourish and keep alive and keep healthy and develop boundaries around. I'm talking about that. There's a buzzword now. It's called detachment. That the more you become detached, the more things come to you. And there's really a lot of truth in that. You know how that is. People will be trying to have a baby and trying to have a baby. And the minute they start their adoption proceedings, they have a baby. You know, these are normal. I don't know, just the way this earth, the way things work in this earth. I mean, it's just interesting how these things are just patterns that happen. But there's this whole idea of, of detachment. And so in the world of like, like, for example, the law of attraction, they will teach about this, but they will take it too far. They'll hijack it, wrap it up in one dimensional thinking and a myopic, you, 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 right? That's not what we're doing. Some of the things they say are true, but package wrong. Because what we're saying is that God gives you your worth. God is what you're attached to, period. And because of that, we're attached. Now, the idea of detachment, detaching, right? This is a buzzword you're going to hear everywhere. So we're going to just talk about it here so you can make some sense of this. There is truth to detaching for freedom. Very important things to understand that when something's unsafe, we detach. That's important. And it doesn't mean you don't love. It means we detach. Easily attached in the wounded feminine is attaching to unhealthy spaces, right? You know, when you see things that aren't supposed to stick to something else, you ever just do a craft project and you had glue on something and you didn't realize it and it sticks on there and you're like, that is not, that nose does not go there on this costume on the side of the shoulder because we become attached to the wrong things, easily attached, meaning we easily sink into pathological situations. Um, we sink into other people's problems. We sink into other people's demons, whatever you want to call that, people's pathology. It's like we sink into it and we attach to it and we become so trauma attached, trauma bonds attached to each other. When you're wounded, right? It's very easy to become super overly attached to other wounded people. And in that way, staying, remaining stuck. So, you know, Charlie and I had a great conversation about that as well today. It's just about health and empowering each other where you can speak about the things that are painful and hurtful, but at the same time, we want to rise each other and rise in ourselves and rise each other to the next step, right? So what's the next step? And it's not, we're trying to fix each other. We're just supporting each other, being there for each other. But we ask ourselves, what are you so easily attached to? Well, if, I'm, if my children have grown up and moved out of the house, and I'm still attached to that role. You're too easily attached to that. Your wounded feminine is I've been fired from my greatest job. No, you haven't. You've done your job so well, they were able to fly away. So there is a cognitive reframe there that we want to make sure we do. But when you are maybe on YouTube and you're learning about detachment, it's not really the same thing in attachment theory. This is more of an energetic idea. There's truth to it. As long as it's within the framework of understanding, Abba is our father, we are his children. And what we want to do is love our neighbor as ourself and above all with every fiber of our being, love and worship God. So that is the framework. And anything outside of that, we become easily attached to that pulls us from all of those good things, loving ourselves, loving our neighbor and worshiping and loving God. 
Anything that's going to tug at that and ruin all that, that's becoming too easily attached. Vulnerability is a strength. We're not saying it's not. This is a different type of thing. This is racing toward woundedness, almost wearing it like a badge. So just be aware of that. Never wear your wounds as a badge. Okay, um, manipulative. Okay, this is kind of a, from my trigger you a little bit because a lot of people are like, why are women always considered manipulative when we're just strategic? And uh, yeah, that we're strategic is the word for manipulate. On some level, it's the same thing, right? We are strategically maneuvering through to make things work out. And you know what? Sometimes we're strategic and we manipulate things. When we take flour and water and eggs and things, we manipulate it into bread. Okay. Manipulative with people. Why would this be in the wounded feminine? Because her truth wouldn't be accepted. So she resorts to manipulation. I've got to get my needs met. I get it. You know, it's like almost like uh, I remember seeing someone in a magazine. They were posing for pictures with their, there was some celebrity and she was pregnant. And the only way she could get her other child in the photo was to say, don't come in the photo. And then the child would come in the photo so she could get a picture. Like you have to manipulate because it was like this child, which was, she was unattended. This mother was always on the road and the mother just really had no credibility with the kids. So she basically had to leverage the, the woundedness of the child to disobey and come into the picture. It just, that was never lost on me. I'm like, wait, that is leveraging the wrong thing. So that's what manipulation would be, leveraging the wrong thing, not leveraging the right thing that would make your child laugh or be a part of something. But this was leveraging disobedience and it was actually parental and child loss. So I, I, that was always one that stuck with me. So in the feminine, the wounded feminine, she feels like she needs to resort to manipulation because she doesn't have any other way that she can find or feel or get there. Okay. So we're not judging. We're not like mad at people. We're just excavating. Okay. So we've got our fossil brush. We're just going through and we're looking at what we're finding and we're not thinking in our heads, 500, like, that's that person. That's that person. Unless we're going, Oh, that's that person. Okay. I'm going to think about that. And I'm not going to get easily attached because they're manipulative but at the same time. Yes, we are all wounded and I might keep my distance a bit, but because I don't want to create a platform for that to run wild and I want to enable. But at the same time, in the back of my head, yes, this is a rough ball of dirt to live on. Okay. Um, and then this kind of goes into what we were saying about wearing um, your woundedness as a badge is being stuck in victimhood and waiting to be saved. Always the damsel in distress needing to be rescued. Please help me, please help me, please help me. And then you have the, if you're operating in your masculine energy, it's you can't receive help, right? I won't receive help. That's it. That's really how you can tell with that one. That's a glaring one that you can see. I'm in my, my masculine energy. So my single friend, whenever I'm trying to, you know, I'm visiting her and I'm trying to help her with groceries and she's just grabbing as many as she can. And I'm like, Hey, receive help. And she's used to operating in her masculine energy because she doesn't have anyone else there. The idea of sinking into victimhood is very much a feminine thing. And when a man's doing that, he's in his feminine energy. He's not in his wounded masculine. And actually, that's not even one of the things in the wounded masculine. It's more um, just be having inner conflict. That would be the closest you really find. But that's the victimhood, the damsel in distress. We're programmed to even look at women that way. All the cartoons, the movies, the Disney shows, there's some man saving a woman, right? So they're just saving. Um, and... Women don't need to be saved. They need to be protected, but they're already saved. And they need to be protected and they need physical protection and they need emotional support and respect. But nobody can save anybody else, right? We all are on our own journey, somewhere in the journey, and no one can save you. And um, you're saved. So when we sink into this victim mentality, I don't know about you, that one is a particularly difficult one for me. Um, you know, everyone's going to be having something on the list. They're like, oh, that's the one I hate the most, you know? And um, it's usually something that we're actually not weak in that triggers us. This is one of those things where it's not the log in the splinter. It's more of like, since I'm strong in that, I have no empathy for it. And since I don't have a victim mentality, it's just not, if anything, I might go the other way. Um, 
this is where I might be a little arrogant and like, oh, who would do that? Um, so check that, right? I'm checking that in me, that that just happens to be an area I should be grateful I'm not sinking into that. And, uh, and, and kind of notice the things that trigger you. It could be because it's a strength that you're leveraging too much. I don't know. Okay. Victimhood, that's a big one. Okay. And then drowning in her emotions. And that's where you also would know a man is in his... Um, in his feminine energy is when he's drowning in emotion. Now, the whole idea of a woman being overly emotional. Okay, there's a couple of things we just need to talk about a little bit. Children in the room, be aware. I'm going to be talking about a little bit of a sensitive topic here for some people. But women do have hormonal fluctuations throughout the month. And that is normal, right? And we are made of water and we retain water at certain times more in the month and others and the moon affects water and we are really lunar and there's a lot to that there's so much to discuss about that's really powerful and i personally my opinion i've never heard anyone say this but this is just my opinion and i'm i'm invited to speak here so i'll just say what i think but i think it's because there are times where a woman needs to be ungated and not ungate herself remember how god shut the ark door like Sometimes God, I think, through the way he designed a woman's body and put that luminary that governs the night, I think there's a way, there's something going on there where she gets ungated. And that's where you get the whole idea of premenstrual syndrome, what they call it a syndrome, where it's interesting to me, it's just like, you know, the gates are down and she's speaking the truth. And sometimes more than the truth, because we have pathologized it so much and we have rendered women as just hysterics when really listen to her. And, you know, sometimes a woman is going to, have a fit over something and really be upset because this is happening and this is happening there. And I'm not saying there isn't dysmorphia involved in that. And I know that there's a lot going on there, but a lot of it, I think is society has programmed us to look at women as hysterics and to see emotional fluctuations as a weakness rather than a strategy for a woman to unload a little bit. And that's just my opinion. And, but I think it holds water because if you look at the birth rates during the full moon, if you look at the cleansing efficaciousness of the new moon, there is something about the body and how it reacts with the moon and women's water changes more than men. Just saying, that's why I look at that. So I would say, why would it be created that way? Why would that be the design? Well, it would be perfect. It would be because maybe she needs a little hand to open up. And then maybe then she's going to shut down because you think of the waxing and the waning moon, right? She's just see a sliver of her right now. Actually, she's a conjunction right now. She's just dark. And you see a little bit and then a little bit more and a little bit more until, wow, the thoughts are given birth to. That's that full moon. And then she's you're going to see the back of her and she's walking away from those problems and those issues. And then that cycle begins again. So it just depends on how you are going to look at women. Um, so if we're always looking to pathologize women, we're always looking to demonize their emotions. If we're always looking, that's what we're going to see. Or we could say, let's leverage this for harvesting her feelings because they matter because she matters because she's worthy and her truth needs to be spoken. So if you are a person that deals with premenstrual dysmorphia, if you have that, that's a really difficult thing. However, you might not have it and you might, but ask yourself a question. Are you programming yourself every month to think I'm just going to become a hysteric in five days? Don't go there. Say, you know what? I may be ungated in five days and I'm going to render myself a little more private and I'm a little bit more quiet just to keep things in check, but I'm going to journal. And I'm going to spend this month journaling all my feelings instead of letting them out. And I'm going to read them at different times of the month when I'm feeling differently. And you know, there's so many different sides to the moon as it gets renewed every month. Just like a woman, there's so many different sides to you. There's your nurturing side. There's your fighter side. There is your, um, your I want to organize my home nesting side. There's the, I need to travel and I've got wanderlust side. There's so many different sides to a woman. She's always so different. And I think that's a really great design too, because what, why is the guy going to come home with the deer meat? Because this interesting creature I'm, is what I'm coming home to. And I think that's really just does something we need to just honor about women instead of pathologizing it all the time. Now, if you have a medical condition and you're dealing with something, please, I'm not saying, and don't, don't take this as medical advice. Just understand that if you're programming yourself to view yourself as some hysteric all the time, and rather than looking at what can we, be, how, how am I benefiting from the way that my body's reacting? You might find something out about yourself and about your marriage that needs to be said, but it's overriding all of these wounded feminine features. So 
Let's not mix up drowning in emotions where we have no voice, we're just a blubbering mess, we don't make any sense, with the idea of a woman being ungated by the forces of nature, by a God that knows how to make nature. So give that a little bit of thought. I'm feeling I'm gonna get a lot of feedback on this one too. Um, but wounded feminine, right? So we're nuancing. We, we know that when we're in aggressive overdrive, we're in our masculine energy, we're whatever, we've put that on. Wounded feminine is when we sink inward into a deeper woundedness that's more on the inside. And it can hide better than the aggressive, outward, sterile, I'm in my masculine energy, but I'm a woman, right? So it's more of that like outward thing. But when we go inward, that's where all the inner wounds are, right? The inside wounds, right? So that's where we're living life on the inside in one way and then living life on the outside in another way. And that's where a lot of those secrets come in where I feel left out, I feel unworthy, I feel lonely, I don't know how to tell anyone. That's wounded feminine. That's not, I'm in my masculine. So if you weren't connecting with, hey, I'm not really acting in my, I don't really feel like I act in my, my um, masculine energy. And yet I'm not, per, I mean, my life's not going perfectly. Well, this might be where you go. You might sink into that wounded feminine. And some of the things we read about, about the wounded masculine, that's where we can see. And we look in society and this is interesting because when you look at the wounded masculine, it screams, yes, ma'am, this is happening. So critical, emotionally unavailable, controlling, um, always needing to be right, stuck in their mind, aggressive, and terrified of failure, right? You can, they, you can see how these are really outward, like angry. I'm not doing that. I would fail. You know, this is really about more like outward. And the moon is like turning slowly, or the sun is just kind of violently a gorgeous sunset to sunrise, and it's like shocking, where the moon's like a little different every day. And yet, what a difference that is, right? Because the sun is every day, up, down, up, down, up, down. And that's really more of like a male thing. But a woman, you know, she takes time. She takes, I mean, we have to take our time to get to know her and to get to know you. And that's why journaling is so important. I would say having a morning routine that you are familiar with, that is a rhythm that you do every single morning is your metric for when you feel differently. Like I literally have the same morning routine I do every morning. I never vary it because I, and if I don't feel great doing it, I'm like, what's going on? Okay. What is happening? Because I know how I always feel when I'm pouring my lemon and vinegar water. I always know how I'm feeling when I'm doing that. Why am I down today? Or why am I angry? Or am I tired? Am I sick? Am I coming down with something? I will know because I know exactly how I feel when I do these things. So there is some value, a lot of value in rhythms to stabilize you. And um, if you're struggling with wondering how to organize your thoughts, how to put things in order, just start with a morning routine. And I'm gonna tell you what, that's a marriage intervention. I have actually prescribed that to couples before. And they, I say, what's your morning routine? What's your evening routine? And they're like, oh, we're just kind of all over the place. I'm like, well, develop one, even if it's just a couple of steps and you do it the same every night and then see how you feel. Just even just simple, like, okay, I floss standing here and I brush my teeth standing here. And then I always put my phone on my nightstand and I get into bed. Like, so how do you feel doing those three things? Like, so you, and you see people say, you know, I realize I really just don't like my, I, one guy say, I actually just don't like my job. I think that why, because Every time I did the same thing, it was during flossing. He was like, uh, it was so funny. He's like, just during flossing, he's like, I don't know. I just think about how much I hate my job. <laughs> and then he got a job. He quit his job and it, he had got a part-time job and it turned into a full-time job. And he didn't love the entry low position he was in, but then he got to where he wanted to be. But it was this simple thing of just creating a rhythm that stabilized him so he could actually understand his thoughts rather than just like always being in a different state where the metric and the platform in the background was always changing. So he always thought, yeah, maybe I'm just tired. And he always didn't have a routine. So women and men both can thrive in routine. I know a lot of people think that sounds like such a small thing to do. It's actually a huge thing to do, but a lot of people don't like routine because then we have to confront. We have to sit with our feelings and say, yeah, I feel something. And that can be hard. So I understand that. So 
we've had our 30 minutes where we've talked about the wounded masculine and much more involved with the wounded feminine. We've talked about over pathologizing women's emotions and we've talked about that monthly cycle and how we could leverage that in a different way, view it in a different way, shift our paradigm that this could be a blessing. This could be a really exciting thing. And uh, we've been programmed to see this as a negative thing, jokes, comedy, everything is always about making fun of all that. Maybe there are problems, but maybe there's something also to look at there and learn. So I do hope you have found this to be helpful. And I look forward to hearing any feedback that you have about this. And if this resonates with you, if you have a morning and evening program, I mean, just start with a morning program or a routine. And if you can add an, an evening, because bookends are really great, but you want to know how you're feeling. You want to know if you're in your wounded feminine, create your genes and you will see, you will see how you change and how you based on connections with other people, conversations with other people, whatever your day is, you're going to see how you feel just with flossing or whatever. Like this is how I feel. This is what my day was, or this is what I'm looking forward to tomorrow. And this is how I feel doing these routines. So there's your practical intervention is your routine. And uh, the information sharing would be about the wounded feminine and the assignments to, if you want one, create a routine and sit with your feelings. So that's our show today for Marriage Moments. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Dr. Robin Gould, and then I will see you next time.